In this video, I will show you how to reinstall the motor and the lampshade and light on a Singer 301. I'm Jen with Sewing Machine Rehab and I show you how to restore, repair, and maintain your vintage sewing machines. This video is part of a larger series. It's called Full Singer 301 Restoration and I provided a link to the full playlist for you in the description box below. If you liked this video, thank you very much. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. That way you'll always know when the next video is out. Now let's get started and reinstall the motor and the light on the Singer 301. Okay, well I'm excited to get started. Getting the motor back into the machine and turning it on for the first time just is so satisfying because all this hard work that you have been putting into the machine, you're starting to see it really pay off. The parts that you will need today are the motor and then this is called the motor hold down plate, but basically it's what secures the motor up in the bottom of the machine. You'll need the plate as well as the screw. I also have the lampshade out and the reason why is once we get this motor plugged in, we're actually going to power it up. I want to make sure the light works. If I don't have this lampshade on, it can be just a little blinding because I'm putting in a LED light this time. So we'll go ahead and put this back on today. That way you can check to make sure the wiring for your light is working properly. The lampshade and the two screws that hold it on, as well as this little glass magnifying lens and the clip and screw that hold it into place are the things that you will need to do this step. I will say if you're repairing this machine or restoring it just for yourself, you don't have to put this glass magnifying lens back in. And honestly, I would try turning the light on without it being in. I think you will appreciate the way that the bed of your machine is lit up without it more than you will like it if it's actually in the machine. But I'm going to show you how to put it back. Make sure that you have your grease because we are going to be greasing this worm gear here on the motor before we put it in. And it probably doesn't hurt to have your oil handy as well. Grab your foot control and your power cord so you have those when you're ready to test out your motor and see if you got it back together correctly. So let's get started and we will start with the lampshade. So take your lampshade and flip it over. Now you will take your little magnifying lens and you'll find the groove in the lampshade where it is supposed to fit. You just want to rest it in that groove with this bubble side pointing down. And it might be easier if you spin it around. This little metal clip can only go on one way. So you'll know right away if you have it flipped or turned wrong. So for instance, it's kind of fiddly. It won't go any other way but this way. Do you see how this has a little curve? It's stepping up to fit over the edge of the glass here. So just line up your hole with that step up over the glass and then you can get that little screw set in there. Just hold the magnifying lens so it's pressed up against the end of the lampshade. Don't let it slide too far to, to the other side and then you can just screw it down. There we go. So I'm just making sure this is slid all the way to the left side here, pressed up against the edge of the lampshade, and then I'm tightening down the screw. There you go. Now the magnifying lens is back in the lampshade. So this goes on the front of your machine using these two screws, and you will want to put some oil on the threads of them. Okay, before we attach the lampshade to the front of the machine, 
we want to put our light bulb in. And this is a bayonet style light bulb. It has these two little points that stick out of each side and you line them up with little cutouts inside the socket here and then you push it in and then twist towards you. Watch how little of a twist that is. See, this is coming out, pushing it in. That's it. It doesn't twist very far. So it's not like putting in a regular light bulb where you would twist and twist and twist. It's just a tiny little twist and it's locked into place. Now I can put my lampshade on and you just, it sets right inside the machined grooves in the body of the sewing machine and it's held into place with two screws. I can't recall off the top of my head right now if they ever use just one screw in the center on the 301s. I know on the 404s, sometimes it will be one screw and sometimes it will be two. So if anyone remembers that, maybe you wanna pipe up in the comments and say so, but either way, you'll have just, you should have as many screws as you have holes in the lampshade. So that's back on. So now what we have left to do is to put this motor back in. And we need to grease the worm gear before we do that. And it's very simple to do. I use my Sew Retro Grease mainly because I love this applicator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end of my motor over the worm gear and I'm just lightly going to apply grease like this just a few times can always add more if I need to once I have that grease on I'm going to come in with my brush and I'm going to work it into the gear spin it around get the next row of grease that I put on and now if you remember we already greased up our hand wheel so we don't have to do that again and too much grease will just fling all over the inside of your machine you need enough but you don't need it globbed on there because the minute this starts spinning it's flying everywhere so this is ready to put back into the machine. I need to flip this over so I can show you how to do it. So we're looking into the bottom of our machine and this motor is going to go up into this hole right here. The way that it goes is with, first of all, hold your wires out of the way. Make sure that the wiring that's going up to the light is not laying over the hole here in the opening because obviously the motor won't be able to go past it. Just hold your wires out of the way and you're going to slide your motor in the hole with the prongs, these contacts, pointing up. They need to be able to reach these contacts here. So then you just slide and because you cleaned this machine up, that motor should just slide right up inside your machine and it will make contact with the hand wheel gear when you do that. So now I'm just going to, while I have my grease out, just top off this grease port here make sure that there's plenty of grease and then i'm going to plug my wires back into the motor make sure they're securely on those prongs when i know that they are i can take this is the part that it seems wrong because you would expect this to cover the motor right 
but actually it doesn't. It works in this way. The plate actually slides like this and you'll find the screw hole here is going to line up with this hole here and you're going to have this piece of metal here and here that are going to line up with these cutouts as well as this round portion. It holds the motor in place because it's pressing up against that tab part of the motor where our contacts are for the electrical connections. But you're just going to slide it up into place. It's going to fit all the way around. And then you can add the screw to secure it. There we go. Couldn't get it in the hole. So then you can just go ahead and tighten that screw down. And you want to snug it up. You don't want this falling out or being out of position in any way. So don't be afraid to tighten it down. Now the motor's in. It's been connected. We've plugged it back in. We can turn our machine right side up now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just spin my hand wheel towards me. I wanna see how everything's working. I'm looking down in the top of the machine and I can see that the worm gear is spinning along with the motor. It's spinning and the hand wheel is making contact. Everything's fine. My needle bar is still moving up and down. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to get my plug and plug this baby in. So I am using a electronic style foot control. If you have the button style one that came with the machine, as long as your foot control is working fine, you should be able to do this test. I'm going to take my power cord and plug it into the machine. And you will see there's kind of like a curve here to the shape of the plug. I just match those two up and I plug it in. My foot control goes in the side. Should have kept this turned this way right here so i'm going to plug that in and i don't have the new feet on the machine so this is going to be really close to the table so let me just plug in the power cord to the outlet so the first thing that i will try out is to see whether or not my light works and it was already on <laughs> whoops so must have had the light switch to on but it definitely does work and i can turn off some lights here just so we can see how well lit there we go so off on there's a nice amount of light coming down on the bed with a new led light i do still believe that i like the magnifying lens off. I think it's even better once you have that in there. But we can turn our lights back on and we're going to test how the motor functions now. This is what I recommend. Raise your foot, number one, for your first test. Number two, disengage the clutch on your hand wheel. That's the little shiny knob on the end. You're going to Hold the hand wheel with one hand and you're going to turn the clutch counterclockwise until it stops. Then when you spin the hand wheel, you do not have any moving parts. Everything is staying still. This is how, if we were winding the bobbin, this is how we would do it. The reason why I like to do that is I just really want to hear the motor. I don't want to hear all the other parts moving inside the machine. So next thing is to just press your foot control. <laughs> I need to go back and watch the beginning of this series because this machine was very sluggish. Listen to it now.
it goes super fast. So now that I know it works, I can tell that there aren't any issues. I can re-engage my clutch and I'm going to just leave my foot up, but watch this. So I can go slow. I can speed it up. I think it sounds good. What do you think? So hopefully that is what you are hearing whenever you run your machine for the first time after putting the motor back in. If you are hearing something different, there are a few things you might want to check. Inside your hand wheel is a gear that you greased. Take the hand wheel off and check the gear to see how much play it has because it should have a little but it shouldn't have a lot if it has a lot of play which there's a way to fix that and i will cover that sometime but not in this video it can actually hit up against the worm gear on the motor because of all the play and it will make a sound and i only know that because i have a dear customer who a machine i sent her had that problem. I don't know if it happened in shipping, I'm not sure, but I ended up sending her a new hand wheel so she could keep sewing and I'm going to check that one out and see what's going on, but that made a lot of noise. Another thing that you might be hearing is if your commutator either isn't properly cleaned and polished or you have an issue with your brushes seating properly on uh, up against the commutator if they're new brushes it's going to take a little bit of time for them to wear to the shape of the commutator if they already had a curved shape and it got one of them got flipped around so it's not matching the commutator anymore that can make a noise beyond that you could have something inside the motor that is hitting probably because it wasn't put back together properly so Lots to think about. If you run into a problem or you have a noise that you cannot diagnose, just leave me a comment and I will see if I can help you. Otherwise, I think we have done a very good job. Now, when we come back, we will be reinstalling our tension assembly. So we'll put it together onto the machine and then we will zero it out to the factory settings and then it will be ready for us to do our first test. So and that's where we will do our finer adjustments as we first start sewing, because that's really where you see for sure if this machine is going to sew properly for you. So I appreciate you following along. I hope that your machine sounds fabulous once you get the motor back in. And I look forward to the next time whenever we reinstall our tension assembly. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.